And David comes in, he, he ain't got, you know, he, he's just all messed up and, you know, just... <laughs> Samuel says, that's him. God, God said, that's him. So I, I don't know why you didn't bring him in before. I don't know why he wasn't in the house. But he said, he said, you see, man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. And he brought him in. He said, you see, there was no coincidence that he was number eight. Because, uh, you see, there, there's really no such thing as the eighth day. He stopped at day seven and rested. And we hear nothing about the eighth day because there's really no such thing. Eight, when you turn it sideways, turn into the sign of infinity because it's a God thing. You don't do any. He, he gets outside of creation. So it makes sense that we had day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, day six, day seven. And he said, oh, I'm not going to work inside of creation. I'm not going to work inside of flesh. I'm going to work with an everlasting covenant that he makes with a man after God's own heart that's out keeping the sheep because he knows somebody that's keeping the sheep could probably be a keeper of his presence. He knows it's somebody that cares about he saw a praise inside of David. He saw a man that could build him a house. He saw something in his heart. And so he said, I'm going to anoint him. He said, and when that anointing started falling, young people, I want you to see this because it didn't just get on his head. We didn't go get a vial and just stick a little bit on his, his forehead. No, it got all over him, got over his clothes, says it went from his head to his toe. It got in his eyes. He saw a little different. He began to talk a little different. He began to walk a little In fact, they say that his garment was always stained with the oil.